is stronger than the enemy. If we would get together in our faith before God, we can turn things around. Amen? Amen. The White House is not the one running things. God is still the God of the universe. He rules and reigns in righteousness. So if you and I would take our place, you know, think about the army. Oh, my time is going. Think about the army. When you join the army, they don't tell you, uh, now you are a part of the army, you need to go to Walmart and go shop for your gears, you know, get your bulletproof gears, get your hand boots. They, they give you everything you need. The same thing in the family of God. God equips you for the task. So if you are supposed to be an eye, everything it takes to be an eye will be given to you. You don't need the dexterity of an hand to be an eye. So God is not going to give you that. We are going to see that in Scripture. The Bible said, God gives you the equipment to do the task. Praise the Lord. My time is really going. Where did the time go? I really, I really need like two hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, we read about that a little bit in the passage we read. It talks about the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then it talks about helps and governments. What are those in the church? The, you know, for example, are you going to find music ministry in the Bible? You see that in the Bible? You know, you see David, the psalmist. But you're not going to find that in the Bible. You're not going to find the guy, you know, the greeters. You're not going to find that in the Bible. Well, it's valid ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? Yes. You're not going to find open a soup kitchen in the Bible. It's a valid ministry. That's where you get your place, your face, by the carpet before God in prayer. Amen. God, I'm part of this interdimensional family. What's my place? And you get busy doing it. You get busy doing it. You get busy doing it. There's another piece that I need to really speak about before I, I round up today because time is going. If you go to, praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. Where did the time go? Look at Romans 11:29. The Bible says, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind. The moment God called you, in fact, Jeremiah said, when I was in my mother's womb, you called me before I was in there. So what you are going to be, the plan of God for your life has already been decided. It's not your decision, it's your discovery. And once you discover it, you pursue it with everything you got. With everything that you have. You pursue it. Everything that you have. So when you are doing your part, the eye is doing its part, the nose is doing its part, the legs are doing their part, then you have a functioning body. Healthy. Moving the gospel forward. Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says, my time is gone, so I'm going to do this now. So I've got this book here, the Belief Series. Many of us say, I don't like to read books. I don't like to read books. Well, the Bible is a book. Get over it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Get, read it. Now, I've got this book. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this book or know about it. The God's Generals. They detail the story of some of God's generals in the last 100, 150 years. What they did, their life, their mistakes, things like that. I want to tell you, the record of this, about these individuals, may not be exactly what God recorded in heaven. Am I true? Am I telling the truth? Yes. This is man's opinion of what they did. But what is God's opinion of what you have done? Here to fall. What's God's record for you? If God was going to open a book about you and say, Hey, Tim, what is there? What is there right now? And what do you want to write in there? I have another book here. It's called The Assignment by Mike Murdoch. You want to find God's place for your life? This is a good book I would recommend. The Assignment by Mike Murdoch. And I also have this book, Following God's Plan for Your Life, by Kenneth Hagen. These are There are so many resources. Now, God may have told Pastor Tim, for example, to write a book. Maybe he has, actually, to write a book. And you're saying, well, who's going to read it? Nobody knows me. I'm not T.D. Jakes. I'm not uh, Billy Graham. You know, how many people will read it? Maybe 100 people. Maybe that's all God wants you to reach. That's true. Come on now. Wow. Get busy doing it. Maybe God has placed something in your heart to do and you are giving all the excuses in the world, ifs, ands, buts, and get the butt out of the way. 
get busy doing it. I'm very serious about this. And you can tell I'm really, really passionate about it. Get busy doing whatever God has called you to do. Because when you stand before him, he's not going to ask you about what you did. He's going to ask you about what he called you to do. Praise the Lord. And when all of us, everybody in the body, is doing what he has called us to do, then the whole body will be growing up and moving forward the way God intends for it to do. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to give us one final thing before I wrap up. You know, the word stewardship comes to mind. Stewardship. You know, when we talk about stewardship, we always think about money. It's not just money. The giftings that God has placed in your life. Maybe you're an encourager. Somebody is discouraged, you can bring them out. Maybe that's your calling. But you know, you're too busy, you know, going about your life, you don't want to do it. The gift and the call of God are without repentance. Remember, God's plan for Israel was not for them to have a king. And they kept whining and whining and whining. He said, God, give us a king, give us a king, just like the other nations. Okay, God said, okay, that's it. I'm going to give you a king. We are not going to like it. So God gave them Saul. Now, look at the life of Saul. Saul, God gave him several assignments. And then one final assignment, God said, go and kill this, uh, the Amalekite. Just, I mean, wipe them out. And what did he do? He disobeyed God. He kept some things back that he wants to use it for sacrifice. And that's where we get the phrase, uh, it's better to offer um, obedience than sacrifice. Amen? Yeah. And then God told Samuel, he said, how long would you 